You're listening to Leadership Powered by Common Sense with your host, Doug Thorpe. Here's Doug. Hello again, everyone. This is Doug Thorpe, and you're listening to another episode of Leadership Powered by Common Sense. Today, we're going to talk about the dynamic in the realm of leadership and leadership development that has to do with leading yourself. It's often said, if you're going to lead others, you got to know how to lead yourself first. And it makes some logical sense, but sometimes that's much easier said than done. My guest is um, a fellow coach who is uh, going to join us in this discussion. Her name is Laura Watson. Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, Doug. Thanks for having me today. And Laura is coming to us from uh, the province of Alberta, Canada, and uh, uh, great far north uh, for most of us, I think. <laughs> Although some's relative, I, I shot a show this morning from a fellow from Alaska, so maybe I think... That's uh, way farther north than me. Yeah. <laughs> he might have won the prize for today, but um, nonetheless, Laura, tell us a little bit about kind of your background as a coach that, you know, helps people with this, well, the whole idea of leadership development, but then this thing of leading self. Mm, sure, Doug. Um, so leading self, my coaching actually is my second career. Uh, my first career uh, and my training was originally in social work. And so my background is actually counseling and leadership, however, because my master's focus is on uh, leadership and management. So I really started learning about uh, the inward journey and look and creating change from the inside out way back in the early days of my career when I was uh, counseling people. But then I discovered that I wasn't so crazy about the idea of helping people deal necessarily with their past all the time. I really wanted to help people move into their future. And so that's when I switched out of the counseling arena and into the coaching arena with business owners. And then that was 20 years ago that I made that switch. And so I've been working with business owners and, and uh, senior executives uh, ever since. And it really is an inside out journey that we work on. Uh, lots of times business owners hire me because there's issues going on in their business and they're wanting to fix things. And then they realize that, oh, before you can fix the things or really at the root of those things is themselves. And so they have to start looking at themselves and what they need to do differently so that they can lead themselves effectively and then start to lead others effectively. It really is interesting, and, and it's not hard to do the math on that challenge, Is and that is that if you're going to lead a business or lead a team, you've got to be the one giving direction, giving a sense of purpose, and setting standards for performance and accountability and all that, and if you show up as the uh, classic hot mess, <laughs> where are you coming from? You know, where what what is your foundation for being able to provide that other direction and guidance? And we were talking in the green room, and you you did mention, and I share the common experience. It's not uncommon to run into a business owner who has a really neat idea, a really good product or a service they're wanting to put out there. But when when you spend a minute getting to know them and realize who they are, they are just wildly scattered. <laughs> they, they don't have their own daily checklist of things to do. There's no order. There's no structure to anything they're doing. It's just incredibly random. And it mm -hmm. is interesting that those are the ones that often scratch their head and sit back and say to the coach, can you fix this for me? Mm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And those leaders need uh, back to, you know, what you started off saying, they're trying to lead other people, but they're not role modeling themselves. So really, how can they expect you know, anyone around them to perform well if they're not performing well themselves first? Yes, a leader needs to have a vision. Absolutely. And a leader doesn't have to be perfectly focused and, and regimented and everything else because they can hire people and, and have, you know, really smart people come in and take over roles that they are less good at. And, and I certainly encourage my clients to do that. They don't have to wear all the hats and they shouldn't be wearing all the hats. But Part of that is figuring out which hat is the best hat for them to wear 
and then filling the other seats. And then as they're wearing their hat, making sure that they're focused and consistent with their actions so that they can get traction and move their businesses forward faster. Have you seen any pattern or any tendency that that might show up among clients? Like, I guess where I'm going with my thought is the idea that if if I'm a business owner and I don't know that I'm out of control personally, you know, how, how, how can one help me grab onto that issue and really turn it inward so that I can get started making the correction? Mm -hmm. Great question. Well, the being out of control part is the core issue and but symptoms are going to show up. So I talk to my clients a lot about thinking about you've got a cold. And so the symptoms of a cold are your runny nose and your cough, and they're not going to go away until you deal with the core issue. So the symptoms an owner might is as often the things that an owner will see first. And the symptoms can be a whole variety of things. It can be uh, their mind going a mile a minute and not being able to sleep at night. It can be high turnover uh, in their company. It can be a loss of clients because they're not delivering. Uh, it can be that their health is suffering or they're getting into conflicts in, with their business partnerships, conflicts with their employees, conflicts at home in their personal relationships. So the symptoms can be a myriad of things, uh, but the core issue is usually the same. And the core issue is that they are not in, in control of themselves. They're not managing themselves effectively from a mental perspective, from an emotional perspective, and they're just reacting all over the place and putting out fires all day long and not being strategic, thoughtful, or consistent. Uh, with yeah. their actions. And so when they're not doing that, that's when all this other stuff shows up. Yeah. I, I'm As you were describing that, I'm thinking of a client I once had that we had begun working together. And when he, uh, I'll, I'll never forget the first day we met, we agreed to meet over lunch and just talk about the potential for what a coaching arrangement would look like. And the first thing he said to me when he sat down, he, he did use the word, I, I said it a minute ago, he said, I'm a hot mess. And I said, <laughs> okay, <laughs> what does that mean to you? And, and he said, I know my business problem is all about me. I'm scattered. I can't collect a, a, a thought and I'm, I'm kind of all over the board. And so anyway, we, we did agree to start working together. And then um, I went over to his office for an appointment and we were talking about some things about scheduling and following up and those kinds of things. And I said, mm -hmm. well, turn, turn your monitor in here to show me your calendar. What does your calendar look like? Mm -hmm. And he goes, calendar? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what we don't need no stinking calendar. And uh, so he said, okay. So he complied. He turned his screen around and sure enough, there was this outlook calendar. It was just a white sheet. Mm -hmm. He, had, he, he didn't book anything. He didn't schedule anything. He didn't look at anything like that. And he he had a folio that he carried around going from job site to job site. But, you know, and he would make notes. But none of that translated into a to-do list or a <laughs> course schedule of things. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, man, I said, you know, you are going to have to come up with some sort of system for booking some of this stuff in, mm -hmm. getting it started. And he did. He he slowly adopted oh, good. a process. And I challenged him. I said, there's a couple of things you need to get on your calendar and make happen on a regular basis. And he he was a guy that the way he was wired, he needed to be able to get to the gym on a regular basis to just work out some of his steam mm -hmm. that he would build up. And uh, he had admitted that he had broken that habit even and you know mm -hmm. stopped doing that and he knew it was affecting his health and blah blah blah. And so um he you know got somewhat back on track with all of that. And we, we I'm not gonna tell you we had a hundred percent turnaround victory in in the mm -hmm. area because it's hard if, if you're mm -hmm. You're coming from a place of total chaos. Nothing, getting, yes. <laughs> getting, getting into any kind of rhythm or any kind of reliable routine 
can be hard, but um, he, he began the journey. Well, fabulous. I think you and I have worked for some similar clients <laughs> because, yes, I've experienced the same thing. And uh, when I one of the pieces of leadership um, theory that I really like is Stephen Covey's idea of blocking your rocks, because he talked about getting clear about the things that are most important to you. And uh, and there's a great YouTube video where he talks about this. He's on stage and he has a person, he's got this uh, giant dish and he fills the dish with all these marbles that, rep and uh, that represent the, the daily things that we're dealing with, email and, and phone calls to clients and, and things that business owners have got going on. And then he's got these rocks beside it, the things like health and fitness and family and a corporate retreat and planning and strategy work, marketing, and which are the big rocks, the big important things uh, in an owner's life. And he challenged the participant to fit all the big rocks in their life, as well as all this little stuff. And when the container was already full of all the little stuff, there was no room for the big rocks. And so what he talked about is reversing that paradigm, where we look at what are the big rocks first, we fill our calendar and we block our rocks in our calendar of the big important items, the work on our business items, the strategy items, the planning items, the supervision of our team items, and then let the other pieces fall in around it. Some of them aren't even going to be relevant anymore. And so they are going to disappear. But yes, we absolutely have to use our calendar. And I I do get resistance from my clients sometimes about doing that because it feels too rigid, but they discover once they get into it and get practicing it, that it's not actually rigid. What it does is it creates freedom for them because their day is planned. They It's organized. They know what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and even how they're going to do it. And an immense freedom opens up after that. Well, I, along that same line, and, and I will echo, I encourage everybody to go look that up. It is available on YouTube, and it is a great video, a great training video. The um, thing I like to talk to clients about is the reality that there are a, a couple of basic truisms in life. Uh, I mean, number one, we all have to breathe air, and we have to consume a certain amount of water to sustain ourselves. Food at varying degrees is optional, but it's it's <laughs> air and water. I don't know. I like my food. <laughs> yeah. But the the other thing that every human being on the planet shares one other commodity that doesn't change, and that is time. Mm. Same number of seconds in the day. So I challenge clients frequently, why is it, pick a name, whoever you want to pick, you know, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. Why do those people accomplish more in their day than you or I might be accomplishing? Mm -hmm. And it ultimately comes down to their choices of the time they allocate to different big rocks that they're Absolutely. To doing. And when you read any of the stories of working around those folks, there's one common thread that certain things are non-negotiable, certain, you know, mm -hmm. certain time constraints, certain practices, just you, you don't interrupt that practice. You, you know, if you're going to work around them, that certain things happen. And uh, I, I, I think there's a lesson in that for those of us now, you know, not everybody's going to be a Bill Gates or an Elon mm -hmm. Musk, or, and maybe, maybe a lot of people are listening say, I wouldn't want to be. And okay, <laughs> I understand that I, I'm with you there. But the point being is if you do have a desire to accomplish greater things, there are some choices you need to start with today. Absolutely. I agree with you. We have to be super clear about what's important to us. And because that's the clarity is always the first step. And then once we're clear, then we can figure out, you know, when and how we are going to achieve those things. Because you're right, we all have the same amount of time in the day. And I think some people too get trapped in a mindset of, oh, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. And they just keep telling them this story. And this, that story becomes a truism for them. 
And they forget that, well, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, time, yes, we have a limited amount of time, you know, and I get to choose how I spend it. And we have to choose carefully. That's right. That's right. And I think that goes back to the fundamental uh, topic we started with, uh, the basic whole idea of, of setting the right mindset so that you can uh, truly be leading yourself before you try to lead others. And mm -hmm. part of that is that idea of making some choices, setting some priorities, and mapping them out. I People who have followed me for a while, read my content, and listen to some of my shows, uh, there's a there's a principle that I espouse. It's called the Big Five, and a, a colleague of mine introduced me to this a long, long time ago. He actually worked for me in my banking days, and that's where we first met, but we've stayed friends ever since. But we were crazy busy in our work, and one day he walked into my office and he threw this piece of paper on my desk and turned around and started walking out. And I said, whoa, 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 you, you, no, nobody does that. Hold on, what, what's this piece of paper? <laughs> yes. And he said, well, I've come up with this idea. I call it my big five. And I said, all right, I got five minutes. Tell me what big five is about. <laughs> and he, he said, I've decided we're here at the first of the month. I've, I've mapped out five priorities that I think I have for my group as I understand them. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to highlight five things I think we got accomplished last month. Mm -hmm. And take a look at it. Tell me what you think. And then we can get back together. And I said, well, wait a minute. And it was real simple, just little bulleted mm -hmm. five things, five and five. And I looked at the top five and I said, okay, I agree with number one, agree with number two, number three. I'm not focused on, let's table that. I do have another thing I need you to look at. So I gave him a third item in that order to put on his list. And then I agreed with four and five. And in that five minute time frame, we had a perfect alignment on where his group needed to be going the next month. And it became the baseline. It became our definition of the big rocks that mm -hmm. you were just talking about. Yeah. And he started perpetuating that idea, and he has subsequently gone on. He's written a book about it. He's he's created some cloud-based software to help manage it for people, and um, and he and I talk about it every chance we get because it's there's just an incredible power in that simplicity. Yes. Spending a minute to collect and focus and say, you know what, if I'm really going to move the needle, here are the next five things I need to be sure I need to get done in the coming mm -hmm. month. Yes. Yeah, you know, these tools are not rocket science necessarily. No. They're, uh, but they're, the brilliance is in the simplicity, uh, which is I, uh, something I love to bring to my clients as well. I'm always out there looking for the best tools and strategies to help them get where they want to go faster. And whether it's a tool like the Big Five or the scorecard from the 12 week year. That's another book that I really love. It's all about, you know, creating a lot, get, getting clear, getting focused uh, on a few things and move the needle on a few things, get those done. Then you're in a different place and you can move on to the next few things. So work uh, when clients can and um, business owners can get focused for at the beginning of their quarter what what are those two three or four goals big five for their quarter uh, that they want to make sure they achieve in 90 days and and then each week look at what are the action steps that they're going to take so that they know the how booked in their calendars so they know when they're going to do them and then they can take consist little bits of consistent action towards achieving those goals and they'll finish out their quarter having to achieved in 30 days or sorry 90 days often what many people take a year to achieve and then they can reset their next quarter and then the next quarter after that and they can repeat that process with a bit of consistency, they're going to get so far so fast. It's absolutely amazing. And it's not difficult. It just needs doing. Right. So on that point, from your experience and observation, why do you think it's so darn hard for some of us to find that discipline and do that setup to have the, the plan, the map, the checklist, the priority list to move forward. 
You know, believe it or not, I think some, because I think it's difficult sometimes because it's kind of boring, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, our technology has got us addicted to instant everything. And so whether we're you're checking social media or we hear a, a notification on our phone or that call comes in or that email pops up or something happens, we're just, we've gotten so wired and kind of addicted to uh, something happening fast that to sit down and plan something out and then just plug away at it on a consistent basis kind of feels boring and doesn't and doesn't appeal to that instant everything addiction that we've got going on now, um, which is, is and I admit, I struggle with it too. I'm a routine person. I love having, you know, my routines and things I can follow. And then I get off my routine sometimes because my routines themselves become boring. And I start looking for a little bit of excitement <laughs> and yeah. chaos has adrenaline attached to it. You know, when we're always go, 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 or drinking from that fire hose, it actually feeds us in a non-productive way because it keeps us pumped on uh, fight or flight syndrome and it keeps adrenaline going uh, for us. And uh, adrenaline can be addictive. You know, I used to work on a 24 hour crisis team. And so my eight or 12 hour shifts were all about go, 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 go. And I would literally feel a letdown when I went home afterwards as my adrenaline came down. So I think, to be honest, sometimes we're just kind of addicted to the adrenaline hits. And it, it hurts us, uh, unfortunately. Well, you know, in, in the, that boredom factor that you mentioned, I think is very real. And I'm, I'm thinking of the analogy with the, our friends in the fitness world. There, there are programs that talk about muscle confusion is the best way to, to advance your effort in the gym. And by that, I mean, don't get in your routine of doing the same 12 exercises every time you go to the gym, because at mm -hmm. some point your body adapts to that and it says, oh, we're getting ready to do number three. And, and it, it, it builds what it needs to do to perform that well, but then it just sort of checks out and it's like, hmm, where did, we did yeah. that. <laughs> and whereas if you're mixing up the routine, the movements and the the requirements placed on your body, every day is a new day of sorts. Mm -hmm. You're at the gym, yes, and you're working your body, yes, but it's it's a new day and your muscles and everything are, are going wait a minute, that's new and different. I, I, I got to work a little bit here to figure this mm -hmm. out. Let me go yep. see what's going on here. And I'll be honest, I haven't quite figured out the exact way to apply that concept to this notion of setting up your business day to, to work the same. But it, I thought about that in, in your discussion there, that, that boredom factor, I think, really does impact high achievers in a negative way. As soon as they start feeling bored, they're going to go chase that other bright, shiny object to find yeah. a new initiative or a new opportunity or something new to be exciting about their business mm -hmm. and ultimately steer the whole thing off course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I do see that happen. And, and uh, I think I haven't completely figured it out either. I mean, one thing I do advise my clients to do is, yes, you know, set up their calendars, block their rocks, uh, take consistent action. But then also, uh, as one of those rocks, I call one of the rocks flex time. And so I have them build in either daily or a few times a week uh, flex time in their calendar so that they can deal with what ifs and crises and surprises and or maybe, you know, research one of those shiny stars uh, so that they can ha have some actual time built in for some novelty. Right. Uh, so that they can uh, scratch that itch if it needs scratching, if you will, uh, and not have it completely derail them. So I think me, you know, so my solution so far, and I have had it work uh, with some of my clients, is to find a little bit of a balance between, yes, let's keep things organized and scheduled and, and kind of methodical in a way, but also let's build in sometimes to be um, more spontaneous. I like that. And... And again, I, I attribute that to those who often 
choose to, for, for sure, those who choose to go down the entrepreneurial path, those are usually the ones that are uh, folks who have a higher tolerance for risk. They're, they're willing to take some chances. They're willing to explore. They're curious. They want to do some things. But as soon as the idea becomes a business, then there's a certain element of routine that kicks in. Mm -hmm. and that's where they might easily get bored and say, hmm, okay, well, I'll, I can hire somebody to run this. I want to go do something else. Or I want to, it is working, now I want to tinker with it. Now I want to see if I can bolt on this piece or go this direction and mm -hmm. make these little tweaks so that ultimately you're not necessarily serving the ultimate growth of the business, but you're scratching your itch about curiosity and mm -hmm avoiding boredom in the process. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, there's two key roles in a business. Uh, you've got the visionary and you've got the implementer. Right. So the visionary and both roles are equally important. You need the visionary to have the creativity, the new ideas, see new possibilities. And then you need the implementer who is turned on by the idea of making things happen, putting things right. in place. And as long as you know that about yourself, then you can build accord accordingly. And I think Richard Branson from Virgin, you know, he's uh, a great example of this. He's the ultimate visionary. He's always, he's, he's motivated by fun and uh, wants to be out there doing amazing things. He's the visionary and he's hired all kinds and keeps all kinds of implementers around him to be able to execute and make those visions a reality. And if you've got both, uh, working, then brilliant. Things can really uh, get moving and shaking then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Very important stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, Laura, I think we're about up on time for this episode. Thank you. Oh, so that's too bad. <laughs> I know, I know it, it does go by fast, but uh, try to be respectful of everybody else's time here too. But of thank course. you for sitting in and doing this. It's been a pleasure. Oh, I appreciate you having me here today. I've really enjoyed our conversation and maybe we'll get to do this again sometime. I would like to and uh, tell everybody the best way to get a hold of you if they're interested in knowing more about your work. Sure. I'm always happy to meet new people and have interesting conversations. So I guess the best uh, two places to find me, one is through my website, which is venturecoaching.ca. And on LinkedIn, if you look for venture coaching or Laura Watson, uh, you'll find me on LinkedIn and you'll find some great resources both on LinkedIn and on my website, all kinds of free stuff there that deal with uh, business planning and time management, emotional mastery, mental mastery, communication, all kinds of cool stuff. So hopefully if people uh, take a look there, they should find some value. Very neat. Well, again, thank you for that. And as always, folks, we will have those links in our show notes. So um, don't worry if you're out listening on your streaming uh, service and needing to get those links. Just come back in when you can get to a laptop or an iPad and uh, check it out. And we'll have that information there for you. And likewise, I want to remind you, if you are listening through your streaming service, uh, we do have a video version of this over on YouTube, channel by the same name, Leadership Powered by Common Sense. Hop over there, check out the archives, take a look at past episodes, and if you've got any questions, comments, or you're curious about a need or a thought, feel free to reach out to me. You can go to my website at DougThorpe.com, that's T-H-O-R-P-E.com, and would love to hear from you. But with that, we're going to sign off and say goodbye. Go out there and make it a great day. Take care. You've been listening to Leadership Powered by Common Sense, hosted by Doug Thorpe. If you would like to know more about the coaching and advisory services he provides, visit DougThorpe.com.